Disclaimer, the following video presentation is for educational purposes only. I, Mark D. Scythian, am not responsible for viewer use, misuse, and abuse of the thermal ballistics data featured in this video presentation. Welcome to this presentation. My name is Mark Scythian. The date today is May 12, 2022. The title of this presentation is Thermodynamics Analysis smokeless gunpowder, gas expansion ratio, 30-06 rifle ballistics. Many ballistics and hunting forums seek out a highly valuable metric for the smokeless gunpowder gas expansion ratio and when calculated under a physical chemistry and thermodynamic standard that value is equal to one gram of smokeless powder will yield 5602 cc's of gas as the time limit approaches zero seconds as an instantaneous value. So most of you are familiar with ballistics theory. We have a shell casing shaped with a taper, something like a rocket booster with a round pressed into the shell neck or the quote unquote exhaust nozzle. And when you pull the trigger, the firing pin then impacts the sodium azon primer, which then converts the solid gunpowder into a pure gas through exothermic sublimation reaction, which then yields a pressure spike behind the bullet backing to then force the bullet out of the shell neck, maintaining the gas pressurization of the barrel. The barrel then has the lands and grooves which cut into the round, causing it to spin, maintaining stability through rigidness in space, and then immediately after the round exits the barrel without power losses, a majority of the gas pressure is bled out through the muzzle brake for practical recoil. And we know that a clockwise twist rifling groove represents an American make, and a standard is one turn per 12 inches. The optimized barrel length for a 30 out 6 rifle is 24 inches, for which the bullet will accelerate from rest to 3,000 feet per second over a 2 foot barrel distance. So by the time the bullet exits the barrel, it is traveling at 3,000 feet per second, then subject to the gravitational vector resulting in a parabolic path of travel. The calculations which support the 1 to 5602 gas expansion ratio for smokeless gunpowder are as follows. We have a smokeless gunpowder energy density of 1853 BTUs per pound one calculated from 4,300 kilojoules per kilogram, and that has a flame front of approximately 25,000 feet per second. One grain mass is equal to 64.8 milligrams. Therefore, one grain is equal to this pound value and this mass kilograms value. We are using 30-06 ammunition with a specifications of 150 grain bullet charged with 68.2 grain smokeless gunpowder. We have a bullet acceleration time of two feet divided into 3000 or 0 0.00066 seconds. We have a bullet acceleration or D divided into time squared of two feet converted into meters then divided into the acceleration time squared which yields 1,399,807.4 meters per second squared. Force is equal to mass times acceleration. Therefore, the pound's force accelerating bullet within barrel is equal to 150 grain bullet converted into kilograms mass from the value previously calculated. Then multiply times the acceleration in meters per second squared to yield Newton's force where 4.45 newtons is equal to one pound force. So there's 3,061.2 pounds of force 
accelerating the bullet over a time period of 0 0.00066 seconds. Hence, we need the muzzle brake to dissipate a majority of the gas pressure without power loss to the bullet as the bullet exits the barrel. A majority of the recoil force is dissipated out, resulting in a manageable recoil made possible through the muzzle brake, also known as the compensator or the recoil dissipator. Next, we have the barrel pressure force divided by cross sectional area. So the caliber is the bullet diameter, so 0.3 inch diameter divided by 2 radius squared times pi is the cross sectional area in square inches. So we take then the 3061.2 pounds force divided into cross sectional area in square inches to yield 43,307 pounds per square inch gauge pressure over a time period of 0 0.00066 seconds. Next is the ballistic power, and remember power is equal to force times distance divided by time. So if we have a constant amount of work or force times distance in less time, we will have more power. And if we have a constant amount of work, force times distance in more time, it'll be less power. So therefore, when they say high powered rifle, they are referring to the ballistic power. And in this case, it's 3,061.2 pounds force times two feet divided into a tiny amount of time, 0.00066 seconds, which is the foot pounds per second. And we know that 0.737 foot pounds per second is equal to one watt. So when we calculate the ballistic power over this small amount of time, 0 0.00066 seconds, we have an impulse ballistic power of 12.6 megawatts over an extremely tiny amount of time. So mechanical watts refers to the kinetic energy or the force times distance work, then divided by time, and then converted into watts by dividing it into 0.737. Smokeless gunpowder sublimation and chemical composition. Sublimation is solid matter changing into a gas with or without an exothermic reaction. If we convert solid smokeless gunpowder into a pure gas, that is sublimation by means of an exothermic reaction. If we were to convert, let's say, dry ice, which is frozen carbon dioxide gas into a pure gas, that would be sublimation by means of an endothermic reaction. For example, you take dry ice out into room temperature and it sublimates from a solid into a pure gas. Next is the smokeless gunpowder chemical composition, which is equal to 59% nitroglycerin, 38% gun cotton or nitrocellulose, which is weaved cotton dissolved into equal parts of nitric acid and sulfuric acid, plus 3% mineral or petroleum jelly. This then results in a clean conversion from solid matter to a gas by means of an exothermic reaction. And then lastly, black powder is no longer used in modern firearms since the start of the 20th century due to dirty emissions and following of firearm components, especially with semi-automatic gas powered reloading. So the last part of the analysis is computing the gas expansion ratio of smokeless gunpowder based on dimensional analysis of a 30-06 shell casing and projectile. So here we have the dimensional specs of a standard 30-06 shell casing and projectile. We first have to compute the cross-sectional area of the primary shell section and the step-down pressure shell casing neck cross-sectional area. So we do so here on these two. Next we compute the primary shell volume. So that is the cross-sectional area times the primary shell length including the solid primer frame framing area. This actually the region. So 1.948 inches times the cross-sectional area of the primary shell section yields 0.3 cubic inches volume of the primary shell section. We compute then the step up and step down pressure of the taper. So that is simply dividing the cross-sectional area of the primary shell section 
into the cross-sectional area of the secondary or shell casing neck section as if the bullet has been removed out of the neck. So we get the volume here, but it's pressed in and we want to know what kind of a pressure drop and velocity and pressure dynamic pressure spike occurs behind the bullet backing. So after dividing the cross-sectional area of the shell casing neck over the primary shell casing cross-sectional area, we get a step-down pressure ratio of 0.6 to 1. So if we flip that around and compute the step-up pressure ratio going backwards into the shell casing area or region, we then get 0.15 divided into 0 0.091 times the pressure spike behind the bullet backing, which then yields 71,385 PSI source gas pressure inside of the primary shell casing immediately after the trigger is pulled when the primer is setting off the smokeless gunpowder, converting it into a pure gas. So then we can, we have all the data now to do the final calculation. Assume we're at 880 feet above mean sea level with an atmospheric pressure of 14.24 PSI. We have primary shell volume 0.3 cubic inches. We have a primary shell gauge pressure 71,385 PSIG. The primary shell absolute pressure, which is the gauge pressure plus the atmospheric pressure, is equal to 71,399 PSIA. Gram smokeless gunpowder, that is equal to the 68.2 grains smokeless gunpowder charge times 64.8 milligrams per grain divided by 1,000, so 4.4 grams smokeless gunpowder charge. And then the ATMs are the pressure above atmospheric pressure. So if we're at one ATM, we're equal to atmospheric pressure. And if we're at two ATMs, we're at double the atmospheric pressure. So we want to compute the ATMs inside of the primary shell after the trigger is pulled. So that would be equal to 71,399 PSIA, absolute pressure, divided into the atmospheric pressure. So it's 5,014 times atmospheric pressure inside of the primary shell volume immediately after the trigger is pulled. And so the shell gas that's produced is 5,014 divided into the fixed volume of the primary shell casing of 0.3 cubic inches. So we yield 1,504 cubic inches of gas. We then convert the cubic inches gas to cc's, cubic centimeters gas. So 15 point, uh, 1,504 times 16.387, the number of cc's per one cubic inch, so that's 24,649 cc's of gas. And then we compute, finally, the cc's gas per gram smokeless gunpowder, and that's 24,649 cc's of gas divided by 4.4 grams of smokeless gunpowder to then yield 5,602 cc's of gas per one gram of smokeless gunpowder. So the conclusion is smokeless gunpowder gas expansion ratio is equal to one gram of smokeless gunpowder will yield 5602 cc's of gas immediately after the trigger is pulled at a time limit approaching zero seconds as an instantaneous value.